Hi students, in this video we are going to be going over slope. Our essential question for today is, how is the slope of a line found? How is the slope of a line found? So first let's go over slope, what's its definition, and uh, what does that look like on a graph? So first, slope, the definition of slope is that is it is the steepness of a line. So imagine that you have a graph that you've drawn and you have a line. However steep or not steep that uh, line is represents the slope, and that is usually represented as some sort of number or fraction. Now one thing we're going to talk about in the next couple of weeks is that slope is often represented as the letter M. This isn't something that we're going to go over too much yet, but it is important to remember for later. Now slope is very simply the rise over the run. That means when you have a line, there is a certain amount that the line rises and then it runs. So there's a certain amount that it goes up vertically and then it goes over to the left or the right horizontally. Now to calculate slope, this is probably the most important thing for you to write down right now, is that you will use this formula when you are given two points on a graph. And to calculate slope, you subtract the y's and then you subtract the x's and that gives you some sort of fraction. Now think of that. The y's are on the vertical line, which it makes sense that it is the rise, okay? Because rise is going up and down just like the y values do on a graph. And the run goes from side to side, so horizontally, just like the x's do on a graph. So all you're simply doing is subtracting the y's and subtracting the x's to get a certain fraction. Now this probably seems very strange right now, but once we start going over it, you're going to see that it's really easy. Now just to kind of give you an idea, this is kind of what we're talking about on a graph, is that this is a line and it has a certain amount of steepness. You can see this one actually isn't a very steep line, but in a little while you're going to learn how can we calculate the slope? What is that number that represents the slope of this line on the graph? Now this is a very silly but kind of fun thing to help you understand different types of slopes because there are four different types of slopes. There are positive, negative, zero, and undefined slopes. And this is just kind of a silly way that I found years ago to use to help you guys figure out if it's a positive, negative, or zero or undefined slope. So a positive slope always goes from the bottom left up towards the top right. And so it looks like this. And that's why we've got this little positive sign for the eye on Mr. Slope here. Now the negative slope goes in the opposite direction. It starts near the top and then goes down towards the right. And that's why his eye is like a negative sign right here. So that tells us that's a negative slope. Now a zero slope is down here, see the zeros? And that means it is a horizontal line. Think about that. It doesn't go up at all. It doesn't go up or down. It's just simply a straight horizontal line, which means it has no slope. And an undefined slope is a vertical line. So see the U in the nose? And that says that there is no slope, or not that there's no slope, but it, that it's undefined, that it's not um, a positive or a negative or a zero slope. It's just undefined. So I think this is pretty awesome. Okay, it helps out a lot. It's important uh, to know as you go on, this gets easier, but this is kind of a silly way to help you now on understanding the four different types of slopes. Okay, so let's talk about how to find a slope from a graph. Okay, so this is actually a very easy concept, and you need to remember that thing where we talked about rise over run. Okay, so rise over run. And that's where you look at the rise on your graph from one point to another and the run on your graph from one point to another. So what I do is I usually, when I have um, this line here on the graph, I draw a line up until it's on the same kind of level as the other one. So see how this um, line that I'm drawing in right now is going from this dot all the way up here so that it's on the same um, line as the other dot. So right there I see that that rise, I went up one and then two until I was on the same line as the other dot. So my rise is going to be a two. So let's see if I can just write that over here. Sometimes this 
pen gets a little tricky. So I know the rise is going to be a 2. And now I'm just going to draw a line over this way, which, like I said, this pen is not so good. And when I draw it over this way, I finally reach the other dot. So I've got my rise. I've already done that. And my run, if I look at this, it goes over 1, 2, and 3. So my run is going to be 3. And then when you write that, you just write it as a fraction, which is just 2 over 3. So it's actually pretty easy. Now, this is going to be a positive line, because if you remember Mr. Slope, okay, the basically the graph rises up towards the right, and that signifies a positive slope. But let's talk about a negative one now. Okay, let's talk about a negative slope. Okay, so on this one, again, we're going to start at that lowest dot and draw a line all the way up vertically until it's on the same level as the other one. Okay, so let's draw a line up. So I know I've got this right here. And I know I'm going to be talking about, again, rise over run. Now what I need to do is I need to count how much did I go up from that first dot, that lower dot, to be on the same level as the other one. Okay, so I went up one, two, and three. So I know my rise is going to be three. But now I need to calculate how far I need to run over to meet that other dot. Ah, it's terrible drawing there. There we go. So how far did we have to run over to reach that other one? Well, so I start here and then I go one, two, three, four, and five. So my run is five. Now, what's important to note on this one is that it's, it looks the opposite of a positive slope, right? So instead of going up towards the right, it's going down towards the right, which means that it is a negative slope. So I simply put a negative sign in front of that number. And that's it. Now, zero slope is super easy to calculate because all you're doing is you're looking and you're seeing, okay, there is really no rise. So my rise is going to be a zero. Okay, so I have no rise at all. Okay, did it go up any way in any vertical way? Not at all. So we know our rise is a zero. But I did have a run. Okay, so if I draw this line, I see that I did have a run from one dot to the other, and that's one, two, three, four. So that gives me zero over four. But that just zero over four, when you divide that, is just zero. So we know our slope is zero. And again, you really don't need to do much math on this one because if you understand that a horizontal line is a zero slope, you can just write your answer as zero. Now, undefined is even easier because the minute you see a vertical line, you know automatically and immediately that this is a undefined slope. And so you simply write undefined. And that's it. So as you can see, it's actually a pretty easy concept. And it's going to be one we spend a lot of time reviewing this week. Oh, let me clear all this off. Now there's one, another way that we can calculate slope is from two points. So before, when you think back to the ones that we had a second ago, these are two points, except they're not written out as points. You're just given a graph. In these problems, you're given the points and you have to calculate the slope. But again, it's very easy. Now the first thing you want to do is you want to remember that formula that I wrote down um, early on. And that says to subtract the y's from the x, or subtract the y's from each other and the x's from each other. So this would be our x1, okay, y1, because that's our first set of points. This would be our x2 and our y2. And from there, as you can see, it's very easy. You're just going to subtract the y, so 3 minus 1, and then you're going to subtract your x's, so 8 minus 5. And you just write it like this. So as you can see, my y's are in the numerator, my x's are in the denominator. And 3 minus 1 is 2, and 8 minus 5 is 3. And that's it. Now this is a positive one because all these numbers, once you subtracted them, gave you positive numbers and a positive divided by a positive is still a positive. So that slope would be positive. So let's try another one. So again, we have this formula where we subtract the y's 
and the x's and we get a number or a fraction. So remember that again, we've got our first set, like this is like our first set of points and our second set of points. Okay, so that gives me x1 and this is my y1. I've got x2 and I've got y2. And all I do is I simply subtract the x's from the y's. Okay, so I've got negative 5 that's going to be subtracted from 4 and then 6 minus the negative 6 because again it's subtracting the second y's from the first y's, the second x's from the first x's. And then I simply write that down. So again negative 5 minus 4, that shows up here. And then the second part, this is very important because this is where a lot of people will make mistakes. Remember that we're subtracting our x's, our second x from our first x, and that becomes 6 minus a negative 6. So many students will write 6 minus 6 and forget that there was a negative there, and it's very important that you don't do that. Now, if you remember some of our rules, um, you need to, if you've got two negatives, that makes it two positives. Okay. On this one, the signs are the same, so you just add, and the same thing down here, signs are the same, so you add which gives us negative 9 over 12. Now, that is your answer, but it's not your most simplified answer. What you do have to do on this is you do have to reduce, which gives us a negative 3 over 4. And that's it. All right, let's try one with a zero slope, okay? Now again, it's the same process where we've got, where we're gonna subtract our y's from our x's and then simplify. So what I'm going to do here is I've got my x1 and I've got y1. I've got x2 and I've got y2, which is not writing very well. Okay, that's close enough. So again I'm going to subtract my second y from my first y and my second x from my first x. So I end up with 2 minus 2, and then remember, it's very important you have those parentheses because with the x's, you've got 2 minus a negative 4, okay? And since those two signs are the same, those will become positive. So 2 minus 2 is 0, and 2 plus 4 is going to be 6, and 0 over 6 is just 0, so we know our slope is 0. All right, let's look at one more like this. Okay, so again, we've got our formula. We write down that we've got our x1, and we've got our y1. We've got our x2, and we've got our y2. And then we just subtract them. So my y2, negative 4, is subtracted from y1, which is 3. And then my x's are subtracted from each other as well, so 1 minus 1. So negative 4 minus 3, that's going to give me negative 7 over 0. And remember, way back when, when we talked about fractions, whenever a number is over 0, that means it is undefined because it cannot be divided by 0. So that tells us our slope is undefined. All right, we only have a couple more examples to talk about, and they're really easy. Now, another way to calculate slope is by looking at a table. And a lot of times students will look at this and they start to get really confused because they go, wow, there's so many numbers, what do I do? Now, all you have to do is just pick two points. So it's very, very easy. Just pick two points and then from there, you just do the same formula we just did on the previous page. So maybe I like these first two points because they're a lot smaller, right? These points are really large, which would make larger numbers to work with. Well, what you need to remember is that first point right here, that is basically 1, 7, right? And then this is 3 and 11. And now we have two points, just like we had on the previous page, or the previous slide, and we can calculate it the exact same way. So we take our formula, our y2 minus y1 and x2 minus x1, and we just start plugging in those numbers. So we've got our y's are right here, so I've got 11 minus 7 and 3 minus 1. Okay, so we're subtracting our y's and subtracting our x's. 
and 11 minus 7 is 4, and 3 minus 1 is 2, which gives us 4 over 2, which is not simplified, but when we do simplify it, it is just 2. And that's it. Now, the cool thing is, let's say you chose these two points right here, it would give you the same slope, okay? And these two points would also give you the same slope, because in this case, this was a perfect uh, linear line, which means it's a straight line. Okay? All right. Now, last problem. So this one is a word problem, and you will have one like this on your homework. And it says, if a line has a slope of 1 half and contains the point 3, 4, find two other points that are on the line. Okay, so that seems really um, kind of confusing, I think, to some people. But start out slow, and if it helps, sometimes kind of look at the important things and write those down. So we know we're going to have a line, okay, and that the slope is going to be 1 half, and that somewhere there, there is a point of 3 fourths. Now, what's the easiest thing to start with? Is it the slope or drawing in the point? Well, obviously, the easiest place to start at is going to be putting in that point. Okay, so I come over to my graph, I go over 3, and I go up 4, and I put that point on the graph, and that represents the point 3, 4. So that's a good start, but now we're talking about having a line, and that line is has a slope of 1 half. So it's a positive 1 half, so I know that whatever I draw, that line is going to have to go kind of in this direction, right? It's going to have to go up towards the right. Now to do this then, all you need to do is use your rise over run to calculate where that next point is going to be. Now I can't really go up and over to the left too much more. Okay, I could go up one though. I could go up one and I could go over two and I'll end up with a point there. Okay, but since my graph is really small, it, it makes more sense to go the other direction. And I can go this opposite direction as long as it's still creating a positive slope. So if I go down one, okay, because that's my rise, and I can go over two, because that's my run. And then I end up just putting down another point. Now I can do the same thing again. I go down one, which is like a rise, it's just opposite direction, down one, and I go over two. And I can put in a, another point. And I just keep doing that until I've gone as far as I want. And then I connect them all with a line. Now when I do that, now I've got several points that lie on the same exact line as, um, and contains the point 3, 4, but lies on the same line with a slope of 1 half. And all I really needed to do was draw my, or put my first point on 3, 4, and then use the slope to help me create the line. And like I said before, I could have gone up and over, but I needed more than one point. It asked for two other points. So instead, I could have gone down one and over two, down one, over two, down one, over two, and then that gave me a perfect line. So then I just look at these points and I go, okay, this one is at one and three. Okay, so that's a point. I've also got one at negative one and two, and I've got one at negative three and one. And that is all you have to do on that type of problem. Okay, so you have four practice problems to try. Give those a shot, put them on your foldable, and then if you have any questions, we will review this in class tomorrow.